Hello and welcome to the Sunday Community Skirmish number 38. I am Urz. Uh, coming into last minute here, it looked like Velvet was a little light on help, so I'm going to be streaming the secondary stream today. Uh, and I have not streamed in a very long time, so let me know if there's anything amiss with the broadcast, be it audio levels or the quality of the video, what have you. But I'm going to get into the Lotus now. Uh, on the red team, which is... Starbirds, I, I guess. We have the oh, we already have an engagement. Uh, looks like Packer is coming in on the falling turtle. I don't know what any of their guns are, but they're pyramidians, so they're probably gap mortar. Falling turtle is going to be trying to shield their ally from the brunt of this fight, um, being the tankier of the two ships. Hax has a mine launcher. Almost gets a nice hit on the Quacker, just a little bit off. Falling turtle loses its whole armor. Moose on the loose. Looks like both the Red Pyramidians are still trying to focus down the Galleon. And now Hax is all alone. This is a bad situation. It's difficult to get quick kills with the Mine Launcher. Um, especially in a 2v1 situation. Um, you can't just run through enemy ships like you could with perhaps a Gap Mortar. Uh, but it looks like Hax might get away. Uh, interesting usage of Tar here. We don't see a lot of Pyramidian pilots with... Uh, with that tar, most opt for three mobility tools, but Hax doesn't seem to be long for this world. No, still alive. Uh, no. Gets the whole armor up just in time to lose it again as he crashes into the terrain. But uh, let me take a moment to go over the loadouts here. First, we have the Quackers, piloted by Nano Duckling, uh, and that is Gat Artemis? Question mark. Uh, with an AI, it looks like DJ Logicalia has disconnected. Um, their ally, the Moose on the Loose, which is your typical Gap Mortar Pyramidian. Um, Montaki opted to bring impact bumpers. Um, and on the other team, which is WAD, I don't know what WAD stands for, maybe somebody could tell me in the, ch in the chat, uh, we have a Galleon. And... It looks like it's it's a brawler uh, with the gat left side gat watcha watcha right side heavy carronade watcha and a rear mine launcher for funsies piloted by itro and their ally the hacks a mine launcher banshee piloted by lock uh, a man after the thrall's own heart uh, kit kat kitty on that mine launcher it'll be an interesting game I suppose um, unless they get rolled over again like they did in that previous <laughs> previous engagement but the positioning on the Falling Turtle is so important because, like, per personally, I've never really liked brought close range exclusive galleons just because it's such an, a not a very maneuverable ship. And close range that is so important because that pier the enemy Pyramidians, like, there's so many blind spots. You could come in high, you could come in from behind or in front, come in from an angle that those watches will not be able to return fire. Um, it's just not a very versatile loadout, as opposed to, say, uh, a mixed build, which would have, like, long range on the left side, forcing your opponent to come to you and taking damage in the process. But it looks like we'll have another engagement in blue sides of the map uh, as the two red pyramids come down. Also, let me know if we need a little more game audio. I didn't have time to really balance it or anything, so just let me know. A uh, whole armor going down from the moose. Looks like Falling Turtle is opting for some mid-range Huacha. Um, although we're not seeing any Huachas going off. Uh, I guess, oh, right, the Ar uh, the Artemis? Probably taking it down. Quacker is moving into the Falling Turtle. Moose on the loose. Took a mine hit. They have to pull back, reposition a little bit. But now Hax is closing in on the Quackers. And with a nice ram. Uh, getting them off their ally. This is a... A team composition you see often, or not team composition, but like a uh, a positioning setup. Uh, almost getting that mine there on the Quackers. Quackers with some nice mobility, hydroing up, and trying to reverse over the hacks. But it looks like he's not going to be over, uh, able to as the hacks rises to meet them. Uh, although Moose on the loose is coming into support, taking a huge watch volley in the process, uh, losing most of their guns. Now our whole arm. This is a weird engagement, almost kind of like a, a ring around the rosy as 
every ship in the game is targeting a different one. Uh, so they're almost chasing each other in a circle. Uh, very strange. But Quackers... Quackers getting pushed to the ground, just trying to stay alive. Moose and Loose and the Falling Turtle. Somebody's deploying Tar. Uh, I guess... I don't... Somebody. Perhaps the Hacks. But... Looks like Blue Team has the upper hand and the... Uh, the literal high ground in this engagement, but... The Red Pyramidian does go down. And Quacker's in a tricky situation. How does he want to try to disengage? It looks like he's going to try to kerosene forward, uh, try to get to the west passage of the map so he can take it back to his spawn zone. Not sure if he's going to be able to. It's going to come down to one of these mines if Hax is able to get one in time. Looks like Quackers is going to make it out of range, so that won't be a possibility. And since the Galleon... Not the best chasing ship. Um, blue team's probably going to have to let him go. Unless Hax can maybe cut... This is probably his only chance to cut him off. Artemis trying to take out the Quacker's engines. Slow him down a little bit, but... Where's the mine? No mine? No mine's coming out. Ooh, Quacker's unfortunate positioning about to actually... Well... Oh no, he's actually going to try to go through this little hole. Ooh, good mine hit. Mine hit actually bouncing him up through the gap. Um, and Hax is going to be... Pers no, Hax is, Hax is rightfully... He's going to back off. He doesn't know where the Moose on the Loose is. It would be... Okay, well maybe, maybe I'm giving him a little too much credit, but... <laughs> he's continuing to pursue. Because the Moose on the Loose is now coming in. Taking the Hax by surprise. And here comes the Gap Mortar. Well, Galling doesn't take down the armor. Quacker is continuing to run. Looks like Falling Turtle might try to catch him on the other side of the terrain. Um, Hax and the Moose are disengaging. They want to group back up with their ally. They want a 2v2 engagement, not this pick and poke, whatever they're doing. But So everyone's taking a breather. Hanging out. Um, I'm going to take a look at that for a moment. I don't have it. Let's see. Uh, and here are the teams we have for today. We have Itril from uh, Overwatch actually captaining for uh, WOD. Again, maybe somebody in uh, in chat could tell me <laughs> what WOD stands for. So I can not call them WOD. But we do have uh, Quackers now poking out a little bit. Trying to check out the positioning of the blue team. Getting a little bit of Gatling fire, but... Not going to get any significant damage in as uh, Falling Turtle returns to watch a volley, taking out one of the Quacker's guns. Um, these teams do seem a little pensive to re-engage. Also, we do have eight minutes. I'm not sure what all the uh, the timer rules and such are for this event, but it uh, looks like we do have eight minutes until overtime. Uh, I don't know, like, if the game ended right now, I'm not sure who would win, if it's, uh, who has the most kills, or what. Uh, I'm not, totally not prepared to do this today, but it's fun, so why not? Uh, teams continuing, just trying to scope each other out. Nobody really wants to commit to an engagement, and rightfully so, because, I mean, just a little bit of mispositioning, say, from the red team in a nice connect from a watch volley, and they're totally disabled, so they have to be very careful how they want to go in against the blue team. Uh, looks like they're going to reposition. Maybe going to try to catch the hacks a little... a little, uh... a little out. Um, another thing... Uh, another thing to take into consideration is the hacks does have these mines, and you see them set up a few of them kind of on the left side passage here, so the red team has to be very careful about that. They don't want to charge directly into a detonation that will, like, totally throw off their game. Uh, but looks like Hass is going to be trying to come up behind as the Falling Turtle serves as bait. It's kind of a floating shield. Get armor going down. Falling Turtle taking a ton of damage. Mortar. Mortar is a lot of damage by itself. But mortar plus a Banshee, that's just bonus damage. Um, and now Hax is left all alone. And again, it's so difficult 
to win a 1v2 engagement with the mine launcher just because it's it's hard to get those really quick kills um because even like one of the benefits of the mine launcher is you can kind of lock down one of the enemy ships just throw them off mess up their gun arcs knock them down to the ground but even if you do that their ally is going to be there to save them so Pax rightfully disengaging he's going to go back to spawn wait for their ally um uh, what does... Uh, I forget what does Axe have with this mine launcher, Banshee. Um, yeah, doing a surprising amount of whole armor damage to the red team uh, during this little this little pensive whatever. Um, but yeah, now the noose is closing in on the hacks and Falling Turtles might not be able to get there in time. Yeah. Moose just with the bonus ram for funsies. Falling Turtle coming in now, and he's all alone. Maybe some nice watch volleys. Um, actually doing a significant amount of damage to the Moose. Um, disabling their engines so that are unable to turn around. This is what they need if they want to survive long enough uh, for the hacks to come back in, but Quackers is on them. Flare going out from somebody. Uh, somebody wants spots somewhere. But Falling Turtle losing the whole armor again. But we're going to see... History repeat itself. I'm not sure if I'm still alive. Um... Alright, I'm gonna, I guess the stream's still live. I've been disconnected from the game. I'm gonna have to rejoin. On, uh, on Duel at Dawn. All right, Duel at Dawn. Uh, very small, very close range map. Um, we have a, just a few moments to get the builds in before they engage. On the red team, the Star Bards, we have the Moose on the loose, piloted by Montucky, uh, with the Gap Mortar Pure Midian for the very aggressive extreme close range. Their ally, Heavy Carronade, Duck Duck Goose, piloted by the Nana Duckling. Blue team, Wings of Daedalus. We have. Uh, the Falling Turtle piloted by Idril, with the left side double watch of Gatling, right side Heavy Carronade Watcha, rear mine launcher. Heavy Carronade is already coming in, but his ally on the blue team, we have I Love Chrissy, with Heavy Carronade and whatever some miscellaneous weapons left side, Gat and Light Flak. Uh, Duck Duck Goose just running in, just taking point, taking a huge amount of damage. Um, these spots are very important. Um, Meaning the Falling Turtle is able to land some key Huachi Volleys on the Duck Duck Goose. And now they're actually switch. No, looks like they're going to be trying to stay on Duck Duck Goose, getting a single Huachi Volley on the Moose. Just trying to push it out of the fight for a little bit so they can finish off their ally. Uh, Chrissy's coming around. Um, this isn't a very... Mm, my, ooh. That rear mine. This is a hell of a hit. Ooh, uh... Um, I guess... Yeah, that was Itril... Firing that mine launcher. A very nice hit finishing off the red goldfish. Um, as the moose and loose probably shouldn't be continuing to charge in, they should take this opportunity to maybe retreat. Um, although, strains are dropping down. Their balloon has not been taken out yet, so I'm not sure why they were dropping, but they fell onto the pipe and died, and that was very unfortunate. Um, but well, one important dynamic um, with the heavy carronade. Heavy carronade is a balloon shredding weapon. What it does, you target the the target's balloon and it knocks them out of the sky. And as long as you can keep that gun on them, 
uh, they're typically unable to get out of the lock. So what this means is in an engagement between two heavy carinade pyramidian, uh, two heavy carinade goldfishes, uh, God forbid a heavy carinade pyramidian ever becomes a thing. Um, but it's very important who gets the first shot. Um, so the positioning, the gun arcs, the timing from the gunner to make that volley the moment the target ship comes into the effective range of the heavy carinade because whoever gets locked down first like it's just such a volatile matchup it can go either way um, another option is you can use if you have heavy clip you can uh, with the heavy carinade you can use one of your shots to disable the enemy the enemy gun because uh, the heavy carinade works very well as a disable weapon for single components if you have a gunner who's able to aim very well uh, with heavy clip because it focuses a spread uh, but both teams kind of hanging out red teams rotating around to the right west side of the map from their spawn it looks like they're going to try to use this cloud cover a little bit um so far in this game they've been the aggressor it hasn't worked that well for them blue teams just kind of hanging out in their ribs waiting for them to come in although well, they are spotted uh everyone's spotted so mm, duck duck goose Duck Duck Deuce is trying to be clever here, uh, uh, going under the ship for, uh, I'm not sure what reason it could be, but maybe just for funsies. Um, but that is, that is definitely uh, an option you can consider. Maybe he's trying to shake the spot, uh, but it does not work. Uh, that is definitely, when you're playing Duladon, especially in a more maneuverable ship like a Goldfish, or even a Pyramidian, it can work. Uh, you can go under that little gap, and that can be a very effective escape, especially if the other team is not prepared to go that route. Blue team now rotating around to behind the Leviathan. Duck Duck Goose pushing forward, doing a little scouting. Uh, this is kind of dangerous because Duck Duck Goose is spotted. So if the Falling Turtle is able to get some Watch of Ollies, perhaps take out the Duck Duck Goose's engines, they will not be able to retreat. Gatling Car coming down, they're not in the Watch Arc yet. There go the watches. Oh, a ton of damage. Just just one one watch volley could do so much damage when the target's whole armor is down. This is a dangerous game the Duck Duck Goose is playing. Like, the game engagement hasn't really started forthright yet, and they're already down to 25% whole, whole uh, permahole. And that's going to be a significant liability in any sort of 2v2 engagement. Their ship's already significantly weakened. Uh, but they do get a nice balloon disable on the falling turtle, taking them out of the fight. But they can't; they don't have a good angle to pursue. So the falling turtle is going to be able to rebuild their balloon and get him back into the fight eventually. Uh, Chrissy, Chrissy is not really afraid. I don't know; he's backing out a little bit. Perhaps taking a bad bump, losing their gun arcs, and we sort of have a little bit of a standoff. Falling Turtles rising again. Their balloon's back up. They're trying to get it back up to full health. Um, red team's taking the high ground. Actually, let me uh, well, let me see what pilot tools they have. Montucky's still opting to take impact bumpers, so he has no no verticality. Um, Duck the Goose, same. Bringing the Drogue shoot. Um, I roll with Moonshine and Hydro. Hydro, interesting choice against heavy carrying a goldfish. Um, and I love Chrissy with the tar. So, well, yeah. Yeah, so three of these four ships opting not to bring hydrogen or shoot vent. So I would think if you're in a heavy carinade goldfish, you'd probably want to try to and you don't have any verticality tools you probably want to try to come in level with the target because it'll it'll take if you come in high the heavy carinade does not have very good downward arcs and it'll take you a while to just to line up the shot to drop fast enough i don't know interesting choices uh piloting choices i guess uh moose on the loose moving forward putting down a little bit of preliminary gatling fire but doesn't want to charge in Galling fire going kind of wide. I'm not sure. Maybe they're just trying to scare the other team. Just, hey. Hey, bro. I got this chain gun. 
Uh, a little some fire, some solid fire coming down onto the Chrissy. Chrissy's turning around. All right, red team. Red, I think red team's trying to identify a target um, to focus in on. It looks like they've chosen the Chrissy, although they're not not kerosening in. They're just moving in very slowly. Um, still not quite sure how they want to approach this engagement. So the Gatling fire continues to come in. We've had no return watch volleys from the Falling Turtle. Um, maybe, I think, probably the gunners might be a little afraid to unleash their watch barrage through the clouds. It can be difficult to launch to, uh, some of those heavy weapons, it can be difficult to land hits through cloud cover, even if the enemy target is spotted. You'd be surprised how difficult it is to land shots when you cannot see your own projectiles because you then can't adjust uh, the angles mid-clip because you don't know if they're going to hit or not. Uh, but Moose on the Loose is uh, moving forward. Falling Turtle continuing to hold their watch of Barrage. That gun ha those guns have a very long reload. You, it's very bad if you miss, if you just whiff uh, a clip of watch it because it takes so long to get the next one prepared. Um, still... Uh, Duck Duck Goose with some nice kind of long range heavy carronade fire. Um, harassing the blue team a little bit. Um, I still don't know what happens when the game times out who wins. Uh, but I would assume blue team currently has the advantage because it is 2-0 in their favor. Uh, but I love Chrissy now coming in on the Duck Duck Goose. No balloons going down yet. I love Chrissy taking damage from something. Looks like Heavy Carronade targeting the whole armor from the Duck Duck Goose. Um, it's I Love Chrissy tarring to escape. Um, not a great engagement by the lone goldfish. Um, and they might not even get away. As they're now turning here, Moose and Loose is going to get a, a glancing blow. Not a solid ram, but in the, in the process, Duck Duck Goose now those watch of Raj is coming into effect. Um, wow. Not that often you see a Galleon win a, a 1v1 engagement versus a disable a balloon killing heavy carrying goldfish. Um, but now the Moose on Loose is in a little trouble. Um, this, I mean, this is a small map. He'll be able to pretty quickly regroup into the spawn zone, meet up with their ally, but looks like they want to stay and fight. And I'm not sure about this decision. As their balloon goes down, they're going to drop. Perhaps this will even... Um, for the Moose on the Loose, perhaps losing their balloon might actually offer them a, a short respite as they drop down out of the gun arcs of both the blue ships. And they have a few moments for the Duck, duck Goose to come back in. Get a nice ram on the Chrissy, knocking out their own balloon. Both the blue ships are charging down. Looks like they want dual focus to Moose on the Loose. Chrissy taking some Gatling fire. Falling Turtle trying to pursue. It'll be a few moments before their, their barrage comes into effect. Duck Duck Goose might be the target. Yeah, it looks like they want to hit the Moose. It's just taking them a few moments to, to turn around. Tar coming into effect again. Not... Uh, kind of grazing the moose a little bit, but not that effective. Falling Turtle and the moose now kind of going at it. Duck the deuce, Goose coming in behind. Watch a barrage on the moose. Moose is totally disabled. Uh, they also might have flown up a little bit back into the tar. Um, uh, but Moose on the Loose continuing to take damage. Watcha, not soon enough. Whole armor gets back up. I love Chrissy re retreating or repositioning. Looks like they're trying to go back under the ship. Maybe not. Hmm. Yeah, I love Chrissy realizing this is not a good place for a goldfish with 10% permahole to be. Duck, duck, goose. 
Balloon is down, front gun's down, Duck Duck Goose can't really do anything about this. I love Chrissy's heavy, nade, heavy carronade's going to be coming back into effect. Uh, them taking a little bit of a bump here. But Duck Duck Deuce. You know, I would say they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, but I'm not sure. Is the galley in the rock or is the galley in the hard place? I don't know. And they're kind of... Looks like they might be under heavy carronade lock. The moose on the, unless the moose on loose is able to kill the cri Chrissy just in the next few seconds. But it looks like they're not going to be able to. Uh, as the Wings of Daedalus take the second game. Tying this up. Series up. 1-1. One, one, uh, between the Starbards and the Wings of Daedalus. Let's see, what's the next map? Water Hazard. That's interesting. I haven't uh, I haven't seen a match broadcast on this map yet, so that'll be kind of cool. As we go into Water Hazard. You know, and as, as I was kind of talking about how this, the squid and the mobula is an interesting combination, uh, I imagine these two two red pyramidians on the starbards with their extreme long range. They're going to be trying to kite the enemy team, stay very far away, and just lay down sniper fire. And like the squid's not going to have difficulty chasing them because the mobula will not be able to keep up. So I'm not sure how they plan on chasing down the starbards in this game. Um, but I will read off the loadouts now. Uh, on the red team, the starbards, we have. Uh, the Quackers, an Artemis, Artem, oh, wait, let me unmute the game. Alright, uh, also let me know if that's too loud or whatever. Uh, with two Artemis on the front, one Artemis on the left side. Uh, and a flare gun. Flare guns, very important if you're going with long range builds. Um, it really helps to get those spots. Uh, and their allied Moose on the loose with double Mercs on the front, piloted Mon by Montucky. And they have two, f uh, no, they have a flare gun of their own and a, a banshee on the side. The wings of Daedalus with a zomb banana, but what? The zomb, zomb, zomb banana, but on the mobula, piloted by it rail. <laughs> um, uh, from left to right, we have the flare gun, the Artemis, the Hades, the Lake Carinade, and the Artemis. So. This Mobula does have the capability to return some long-range fire, uh, but their ally, the Squid, does not. Piloted by Lochnagger with the Gatling Flamer. Mine Launcher Rear, very standard, close-range, harassment-disabling Squid. Um, you know, potentially, if the Mobula is able to distract one of the Red Pyramidians allowing the Rhyming Speed to engage the other one, I mean, the Squid can be can work pretty well against the sl um, the slow turning sp if you uh, um, abuse the slow turning speed of the pyramidian uh, the squid can be very effective especially with red team not bringing guns that are very suitable for close range so if the ramming speed is able to close the distance in their squid they might be able to get some work done uh, currently they're being very sneaky here they're hiding behind this pillar which, I don't, you know, I'm not sure what they could actually, I mean, because they can sit here, but Red Team has all the sniper weapons, so Red Team's not going to come in. So if they're planning to ambush the Star Bards, they're not going to be able to, they're just going to sit here forever until everyone dies of old age. But, Flare's going down, uh, everyone's currently revealed... Nobody has good gun arcs on anyone. Squid's poking out a little bit. Um, which is fine. Squid's fast. They can... They, you know, Squid works very well as a scouting ship. Maybe that's one of the reasons they have this kind of forward position is to try to scout for their ally, get spots, um, let them know where the red team is located. Um, and red team's, red team's actually going to be repositioning a little bit. Oh, and also this knuckle cracking is apparently triggering my note, my uh, 
uh, noise filter. I, I apologize for that, but the ring speed is actually going to be charging in here uh, to the closest piece of terrain. He wants to remain in close proximity, so if he gets an opportunity to jump on the red team, he can take it. But will he get that opportunity? It looks like red team still sticking back. Zombie uh, is actually coming in as well. Get a little bit closer so they have a little bit of uh, more consistent fire from their Hades. Because uh, definitely the Mercs on the Starbards give them a little more of an edge in the extreme long range. Uh, just because the Merc is so easy to hit with it at long ranges, the Hades a little more tricky. Um, so even though the Zombie has uh, has some, some weapons that can be effective as snipers, um, they probably want to be a little, little bit closer uh, based on what the Red Team is bringing. Um, and they are going to be taking some Merc Fire here. Merc Fire is going to be very annoying because it's going to constantly take down their whole armor and they're going to have to keep rebuilding it. Um, although Zombie's doing a good job using their vertical maneuverability. They're dropping down a bit, dodging a lot of those shots. As they're running speed now, squeed, r ramming squeed, uh, taking this opportunity to, to identify that the Moose on the Loose is a little bit separated from their ally. Um, and this is actually... Uh, well, Quackers is able to turn around and taking some Merc shots. Um, you know, they could probably continue this engagement because the Quackers doesn't really have much kill potential since they only have the double Merc, so it'll take a very long time to kill the Squid. So if the Ramming Squid's able to keep their gun arcs against the Moose, their ally is not going to be able to do much about it. Quacker is going to try to come back in. You know, the, the first instinct of a Pyramidian pilot whenever your ally is in danger is to try to charge in and ram the offending ship. Uh, just to try to give your ally a little bit of breathing time to get out of their situation. Also, these teams deciding to engage on the, the very edge of the map making camera control a little sketchy. Oh, right, let me, uh... What the fuck? What the hell was that? What is... I... Okay. I feel kind of toasty all of a sudden. Apparently I'm flying this Pyramidian. You know, this is probably a conflict of interest. I probably shouldn't be broadcasting uh, my own match, but... Um, uh, Moose on the loose going down, taking a lot of damage as the zombie's able to come back in. Apparently also while I was playing with the camera, the Quackers was taking out, taken out by the Mobula, so... Um, yeah, a solid engagement from the blue team. This is very, um, you know, what might typically be a very anachronistic kind of team composition, a squid, a very fast squid with the mobula, with the kind of fatty mobula, um, is actually working very well against what the Starbards have brought. Um, which is one of the reasons why it can be kind of sketch to bring... You know, you see like this triple Artemis bringing ship builds that are unable to get kills by themselves. Um, it means they're relying extremely heavily on their ally to get any sort of damage done. Uh, so if their ally dies, they're kind of out of luck. Um, but they are dual focusing the zombie now uh, as ramming squid again, trying to come up behind uh, behind the red team. But ramming team, and now that they see the squid is behind them, they're charging forward. Perhaps they will even be able to get a good opportunity to get some rams. Uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, rams very effective against the mobula, and squid is going to need need to do some good work here to knock, to do something to disrupt these pyramidians as they charge on the zombie. But um, zombie with a good a good jump. Managing to completely evade the ram of the quackers, but now the quackers is going to be turning around for the second pass um, Ramming squid is a is able to get the moose uh, off their ally as well So this is not a bad engagement for blue team uh, Even though it seemed like maybe the blue ships were a little bit separated for a moment um, And red teams again red teams going to be trying to focus a single ship because it's the only way they can do real damage so even though the moose is being assaulted by the ramming squid. They have to keep trying to focus on the mobula with their ally or they will get nothing done. Um, 
And Squid's gonna go in for a little bump. Little bump. Okay, just fl no bump. Just flamers. Quackers. I'm not sure. I wasn't paying attention. I'm not sure what happened there, but suddenly Quackers is facing the opposite direction and taking a ton of damage from the Mobula and the Squid. Um, it looks like they're going to use this, this sudden sudden turnabout to their advantage, putting a little bit of art fire on the ramming squid, trying to take down the flamethrower and the Gatling gun. Unable to do so as their ally the moose is now kind of in a bad spot. Quackers, um, yeah, you see Quackers' balloon is on fire. It's about to burn down. Uh, when your balloon is heavily damaged, it affects your vertical mobility so much. So if the enemies are able to abuse that, you're going to be stuck stranded very high or very low and unable to equalize the, the um, vertical distance. And now Quackers, not not long for this world. Um, and we have a, a dominating game from, from the Wings of Daedalus on the blue team with this, this squid mobula composition working very well for them. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see where red team decides to spawn because they are... Um, blue is... Uh, on the red side of the map, as you can see on, on this map. Also, apparently there's a little triangle where I am. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, red team choosing, trying to find the, the farthest spawn from where they think the blue team is up in this, this northeast corner. Because they, they need the time. They need to be able to bring their sniping barrage into effect to pick away at the blue team. They just haven't been able to do that. In, in the last engagement, they tried to go for a little bit of a closer range, a ram, tried to separate the blue team a little bit, and that didn't work either, so now they're going back to sniping, but they're going to be backed into the edge of the map, and this, I don't know how well this is going to work for them. They need, specifically, they need they need to get a kill on this mobula at any point. They just haven't been able to do it. You see, the, the mobula's still, oh, well, okay, now they're taking out, taking some damage. Um... But previously, they only had taken about 30% permahole damage this entire match. So, like, the sniping just not working out for the Starbards. Um, and this is really their only, their last opportunity before they're eliminated from this tournament. Uh, Ramming Squid able to engage. Um, like, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the red team's able to do about this. Uh, Quackers dropping down. I don't know. I guess they're going to try to take out the Squid Engines. Disable its mobility. Ooh, nice tar from the squid. Um, is zoning out the quackers, giving them free range on moose. And the moose is extremely low with less than 10% permahole, so just any hole break is going to end the game. And we have the match decided 2 1 in favor of the Wings of Daedalus, and they will move on. face the riders in the, uh, the second round of this tournament.